Something a bit off with your wine these days? Prices jumped lately? Climate scientists have the answers that are bedeviling oenologists, experts in the science of winemaking, around the world, including Canada. A new study from the University of British Columbia says that rising temperatures are changing the wine industry, hurting many long-established regions while providing opportunities for a few new areas. I spoke to Dr. Elizabeth Volkovich, the senior author of the study and an associate professor at UBC's Faculty of Forestry. Welcome to the interview, Elizabeth. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, your team did, uh, as I understand it, did a, a study of the effect of climate change, warming temperatures on mm. global winemaking and including Canada. So maybe you could just give us an overview of what you found. Sure. This is a big international team study. We've had colleagues from Spain, France, Canada, United States, and I'm probably missing a country working on this together for over eight years. And the goal was to try to figure out how has climate change already impacted wine growing regions around the globe? It seems like a very straightforward question. You would probably think we already have an answer to it. We don't. Um, and that's partially because making wine is complicated and the plants that produce wine grapes are complicated like most plants. So if you're growing a plant in southern Spain, it has a totally different timing of bud burst and harvest than if you're growing it in the Okanagan in Canada, where it's going to bud burst maybe a month or two later than Spain and you're going to harvest it a little earlier. Controlling for that alone takes a lot of work, which is something we did in this study. We also controlled for the fact that different regions grow totally different varieties. So Pinot Noir will be grown more commonly in the Okanagan, for example, than you would grow it in Greece or Italy or really hot places where that variety doesn't fare well. Um, and finally, it's just a little hard to get global climate data. So we, with great colleagues and lots of time, pulled this all together. And what we found is that climate change has different impacts on different parts of the world's wine growing regions. Certainly every region we looked at effectively has warmed. And the biggest increases are happening right now from our data in Europe. So Europe has mean growing season temperatures that are already two to three degrees hotter than they were before 1980 when significant anthropogenic warming started. And we also saw a surprising amount of changes in metrics related to extreme heat, especially in Europe. So I think the big surprises were how much the change has already happened in wine growing regions with climate change and also how much of it is related to extreme warmth. Whereas we, we often think of climate change as really impacting the cool nights. Um, we're starting to realize the big extremes are also at the higher temperatures. What changes will consumers notice? Will they notice a change in the, in the, uh, the taste of the wine, in the price of the yeah. wine, av availability maybe? I think consumers are already experiencing all of the changes that go along with the climate shifts we found. The biggest one, I would argue, is that when you have hotter temperatures in these regions, which we have, grapes ripen faster. And so harvest is happening a month earlier in some parts of Europe already. And that means when you harvest a grape in a hotter month, it's a more sugar-rich grape. So it has lower acid. The flavor profile is totally different when you have a different sugar to acid ratio. But it also means that the alcohol content goes up. So that sugar in the berries transforms directly to alcohol. So alcohol levels in wines have been going up with climate change over the years. Growers are already um, sending out those wines and drinkers, wine drinkers are experiencing them. The flavor profiles are definitely different when you harvest a grape in a hot month. The aromas, the tannins, the, the whole flavor of it is a little bit different. And then some things are changing that wine drinkers and connoisseurs probably don't notice as much which is that growers are trying to counteract these impacts on their wines. And they're, they're planting a little bit, depending on the region and where you are, a different variety that maybe under the new climate will taste like an older variety you used to drink. And they're also changing a lot of small management things that they can. Maybe they put leaves around, that they leave the leaves on the vines longer to try to shade the grapes, to try to create a cooler microclimate. Um, so the wines are already impacted. I think the question is, how big a change are growers going to have to make to keep quality and price from changing dramatically in the future to the point that it's really noticeable to consumers? Is it fair to say that the changes to date, uh, while they may be significant for the industry, mm -hmm. have not been significant for the consumer, but that is likely to change going forward? I mean, I think the higher alcohol in wine is significant to consumers, but they don't notice it and they don't link it directly to climate change. That said, I think 
the impacts that consumers will really notice, like bigger changes in the taste of the wine profile. And because it's hard to taste alcohol, you don't really taste it, but it's there. Um, and also the price are, are going to change in the future. So certainly in the Okanagan with the huge cold hardiness, the freezing snaps they've been having, as well as the fires and the heat extremes, you know, they're getting both the cold extremes and the warm extremes, um, really pinching the industry. It's hard for that not to have an economic impact on the industry that eventually is passed on to consumers. Um, I don't think we have good evidence that it's happening yet, but I think we have lots of wine growers who are really concerned about it. Let's talk about the Canadian industry. So uh, my understanding from your study is that Canada has a cool climate brand. Maybe you could Yeah. explain that. Yeah, so what's wonderful about wine and different wine growing regions is that they try really hard, the growers, to match the style of grapes they produce in the wine to the terroir, to the earth they have. The earth they have includes the climate. And so a cool climate region like British Columbia and Quebec and any other region in Canada that's growing wine is on the edge of where you can grow wine. It is inherently at the coolest edge of wine growing possible. And a cool climate means that you need to think about the varieties that will actually harvest, be harvestable. You'll be able to collect them within the year because they'll ripen all the way. That's a huge limitation to most cool climate regions, which varieties will ripen in a regular growing season. Um, one benefit for regions that are cool climate is with climate change and it gets warmer, they would ideally have access to a greater diversity of varieties as their season is longer and they're not limited so much by season warmth. Um, so we tend to grow lots of Pinot Noir for reds. Those can be harvested earlier and a very light style of Pinot, I think is a really appealing style. It's a classic cool climate wine. Um, Riesling's cool climate style Chardonnay. So it really invokes a, a style of wine that is appropriate to a region that is not going to always be able to harvest at really high sugar, ultra ripe grapes. That is really preferable to many consumers, but now they're going to have to adapt to that shifting to longer seasons where maybe they need to change varieties to maintain that style. Maybe they try new styles. And additionally, it's, it's not an easy adaptation process as we're seeing, because it's not just that the seasons are getting longer and warmer, they are getting more extreme heat and frosts. Um, as a resident of British Columbia, one of the, the biggest um, complaint I hear uh, is smoke from wildfires. Mm -hmm. How does that affect wine growing in places like the Okanagan? I mean, dealing with fires is just a massive part of the industry now over the last 10 years. And I think something almost no wine grower was prepared for 20 or 30 years ago. So I would say North America and Australia are currently being hit the hardest by it. They are industries trying the hardest to figure out how to adapt and, and what it means. Um, I mean, two things happen when you have smoke. One is you either lose the entire plant to the, to the fire, which really has happened across these regions, and that's a huge economic loss. The other is that your plant survives, but it has been exposed to smoke. When you have that happen, how bad the impact is on the grapes, how much you taste it, really depends on what the phase that the grape was in developmentally. So if... You know, usually these fires happen in late summer, sort of July, August, when it's really hot and the, the fuel load is very dry. And that's almost the worst time because the berries are forming and getting bigger and ripening at that point. So a lot of the smoke can end up in the berries. Um, I think the growers have done an amazing job of trying to now reposition about do we want varieties that ripen at a different time so that maybe the even if there is a fire, the smoke is not incorporated so directly into the berries? Um, and also just technology to know how much smoke hit their berries is a problem, right? Like they don't, we don't have technology at this point that's easily and readily available for everyone to know across a large vineyard. Did the fire that was nearby actually have smoke that reached them or were the wind patterns such that even though that vineyard was right next to a fire, it didn't get a lot of impact. So just being able for growers to, to even know what the impact is, is a struggle. One of the things that surprised me was the impact of of uh, extreme cold, Mm. you know, minus 25 uh, Celsius, which is uh, pretty cold for British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And uh, explain to us how the, uh, the, the cold snaps are Mm. uh, ne negatively affecting BC growers. Yeah, so cold snaps are the reason that wine growing is limited in the Northern Hemisphere. So BC growers are 
planting as far north as they can, limited effectively by when it gets too cold in the winter. Wine grapes as a plant um, have a certain amount of cold they can withstand. So, you know, a pine tree from the northern reaches of Canada can get a lot colder than a wine grape because a wine grape plant is coming from Europe originally and is adapted to only certain extremes of cold. So for the species that is grape, um, for grapevines as we know it, the wines we drink, they usually can't get much more cold tolerant than like negative 27 degrees, negative 26. How cold tolerant they get depends on two things. One is what variety. So Riesling can get to a lower level of withstanding maximum temperatures than Syrah, for example. Um, the other is the climate before the extreme cold. So plants don't instantly in September get to negative 27 degrees cold tolerant. They gain that cold tolerance over the season in response to the exposure of temperatures. So if you went outside in the Finger Lakes region of New York and got a plant in the winter, it would not withstand as cold temperatures as one in the Okanagan. The Okanagan to date has had a good climate regime of getting these wine grapes to their maximum cold tolerance per variety every winter. Um, so what's been happening in recent years is one, there's a concern and an open question of whether climate change is shifting the cold tolerance that we are actually getting in the Okanagan. I don't think we have good evidence for that, but it's an obvious concern for growers that maybe even though the plants should be really cold tolerant. With climate change, they will be less cold tolerant because of the way the process works. And the other is just that we have had two winters with extreme cold snaps that are below the limit for most wine grape varieties that are from Europe, which is all wine grapes effectively that are 100% vinifera. And so when it got down to being negative 27, negative 18 as an average over two days, like very few wine grape plants can withstand that as a, as a whole species of plant. And then you lose often you just lose the bud the bud tissue is the most sensitive but if you lose the bud you lose the crop for the whole year and i think that's why we're seeing a lot of growers who are not able to keep their properties yeah i, I noticed that um uh, last year there was a big uh, winter snap and uh, a very large uh, uh, economic hit of yeah 440 million dollars and a quarter of the bc wineries put up for sale might yeah. we see that happen more frequently I think the BC wineries are in a tough spot because as it stands now, we have no clear predictions that these cold snaps should increase or change. Um, they are, they are as the climate works, they, sh they usually happen every 20 or 30 years. And in this case, almost 100% of the crop was lost across, across the Okanagan. I think if you went back 50 or 60 years and said that to Okanagan growers, that would be normal to them. I think it hasn't happened as recently, and it's hard to know if that is anthropogenic climate change increasing the risk of cold snaps or the fact that cold snaps happen. And if you grow grapes for 20 years, they happen. We just don't have enough data, I would say, to know which of those two is happening. But at the same time, the growers are really are going to experience more extreme heat for sure. So I think they have to move forward in a world where they are limited by cold snaps still. And yet they are having fires and extreme heat that they also have to deal with. So it's a much harder industry to be in than it, it felt like 10 years ago. Um, let's talk about one of the other uh, major uh, winemaking areas in Canada, which is Ontario. How is Ontario mm -hmm. faring? Um, I am more of an expert on the Okanagan region since I live so close to it working at UBC Vancouver. Um, I, I think Ontario is dealing with many of the same issues in terms of warming temperatures and how to adapt to warming temperatures. I'm not aware of them dealing with as much of these frost events. That's, that's less of a limitation for them in many ways, um, though it's certainly something they worry about. I think for them, one thing that they're probably looking for is it's a more humid region. So it's, uh, you know, the Okanagan is quite dry in the summer. Wine grapes come from the Mediterranean, which is an inherently dry region. They're a bit adapted to a dry summer climate. When you have them in a place like Ontario, where it's more humid and wet in the summer, and it may get more humid as opposed to more dry with climate change, you increase the disease load that those plants have. So nice wet temperatures is great conditions for mildew. And so I think they're looking towards that as being an increasing um, problem to worry about, but they're also warming so that eventually they may have new varieties they can try as well. So similar, similar options for adaptation in terms of changing varieties, but, but a bigger problem potentially with disease change.
If you could look out, we'll wrap up the interview this way, uh, Elizabeth. Um, if you could look out over the next uh, five or 10 years, what are the, you know, how might these trends affect Canadian growers? Uh, are we going to see, is this a, a gradual change that they'll have time to adapt to? Or is it likely to put the industry in, into crisis? I mean, I think if you talk to some BC growers, it feels like a crisis right now. Like this is more than they can adapt to because of the heat, fire, and now cold extremes. So it depends a little bit on where in Canada you're talking about and what your level of crisis crossing thresholds are. Um, and I think with climate change, we don't know. You know, the overall trend is for warmer temperatures. That's what climate is. It's like an overall average. So we talk a lot about that in science as it's getting warmer on average. The reality of climate getting warmer on average is that temperatures are more extreme almost every year. And so I think adapting to that means adapting to not just this sort of mean shift in climate, but what that average shift is, which is more extreme heat most years. Um, longer seasons that are also drier, where you get a run of really hot days that are harder to deal with, irrigation and water resources changing. Um, growers are aware of these pressures, but I don't think we have a good infrastructure in place to help them adapt as fast as they may need to. Uh, Elizabeth, this has been fascinating. I learned more about wine in uh, in 15 minutes than I, than I knew. Thank you very much for this. Thank you for having me.